Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's been so long since I made uh, a video about a Czech subject, um, but I'm really excited because yesterday I had the greatest news, something that I was hoping for, that I was praying for, and that is on Sunday, the Dutch football team will meet the Czech national team in the European football uh, championship. And I couldn't be more excited uh, for this match to happen. So on Sunday, we will be hearing this beautiful Kde domov moi, the Czech national anthem on the Dutch TV. So I thought I'm going to give you a little bit of background information about this beautiful song. It is a national anthem that is not like a lot of other national anthems. And I will tell you why. Um, last year, I made a video about me singing uh, the Czech national anthem as a lullaby for my kids. I sometimes do that. Uh, that was a, a little bit of a confession and uh, I was so embarrassed to share the video, but I did it anyway. Sometimes I believe, you know, the magic happens out of your comfort zone. Um, but the thing is, I got so many nice comments. There were people uh, uh, crying because of me singing the song. It was touching to a lot of people. Um, people had goosebumps and they were emotional. And uh, yeah, that was really nice to read. Um, yeah, so... I will link the video down below in case you've missed it, um, so you can watch it if you like. Um, today I will not be singing it again, but I'm going to talk a little about the background information of the Kde Domov Moj. So the song was written back in 1834 um, in a theater play, and um, there was actually some discussion about it because, you know, the, the person who wrote the theater play, um, the guy named Teal, he wanted to cut out the song because he thought, you know, it was a bit average, but then Skrup, the composer of the music, he really wanted to keep it in. So they kept it in. Actually, this guy, Skrup, the, uh, the one who wrote the song, uh, at least the melody of the song, he is buried in a cemetery in Rotterdam. I didn't know this, but I think that's very, uh, a very cool detail. Um, so yeah, Rotterdam is in the Netherlands for the people who are watching from America and they have no idea what I'm talking about. So luckily they kept the song in and it became a huge hit. Uh, so yeah, it was really famous. But in 1870, I believe, there was some discussion going on about the song. And the poet Jan Neruda, he asked the famous composer Petri Smetana to write a new national anthem. Luckily, Petri Smetana He's a cool dude. He refused because he said, you know, if the people choose this song as their national anthem, we shouldn't touch it. You know, it's it's chosen by the people. So that is how it should be. So he refused to write another one. So that is how the Kadet Domov Moy um, stayed this national anthem for Czechoslovakia and later on the Czech Republic. Uh, so there's actually a second part of that song that is a, a, a bit less um, calm. Uh, and that is the Slovak part. And still, when they separated, the, the countries, when they separated, um, you know, they both kept their parts uh, in. But I really prefer the Czech part because it is not like a very traditional anthem. Normally, an anthem, most of the anthems are about fight, going to war. They're, you know, very much, um, you know, they are sometimes they are marching and there is quite some power in it. Uh, but the Czech national anthem is rather sad and it always makes me emotional when I hear it. Um, and, uh, you know, also because of the history of the Czech Republic that gives this extra dimension to, to this song. And um, yeah, let me quickly explain. Uh, I have made another video about Czech hospitality. And in that video, I share a lot of information about the Czech history. Um, let me see if I can really like put it together in a few sentences. So the Czech has been uh, a very, very proud nation under the rule of Charles IV. He made Czech Republic and especially Prague the center of Europe. Um, at that time, people were so proud and still the Czechs have this pride because one day they were the center of Europe. Charles University, one of the first universities in the world. Um, Charles IV, who built the Charles Bridge, who, made, who built so many beautiful castles and buildings. And yeah, I think under that time, uh, Prague was a booming city and the people were very proud of that. Um, after Charles IV, there were some sons and, you know, they, they made a, a bit of a mess. And then the Habsburgs came and that was like two, three hundred years of oppression. 
And then at one point, um, you know, Second World War came and after the Second World War, the communists took over in a nutshell. Um, and then in 1968, there was Alexander Dubček. Uh, he was the leader of the Communist Party, but he was having this vision of a more uh, of more freedom, like socialism with a human face, he said. He was slowly opening up to, to the West. He was opening up his horizon a little bit and the people felt there was an opening for more freedom. Uh, so that was a time, a beautiful time, Prague Spring, uh, very important in the history of the Czechs uh, and of the Czechs nation and identity. Um, so Prague Spring was a time of hope. Uh, people were feeling that there was space to breathe, that something was happening, and uh, they were hoping for a better future, a future of more freedom. Unfortunately, Prague Spring, a time of hope. Um, unfortunately, in uh, 21st of, on the 21st of August in 1968, also a very important date, um, the Czech people uh, woke up to find um, the Soviet Union troops uh, of the Warsaw Pact in the streets, tanks, troops, they violent, violently took over. Um, so all the hope that people had from Sprague Spring uh, suddenly came to an end. That was a very, very sad turning point. And a lot of people left the country uh, when, they, when they could. They uh, left uh, the country to uh, go to America, uh, to go to Canada. Um, so a lot, a lot, a lot of people, when they had this last opportunity to flee to the West, uh, they left the Czechoslovakia. They left Czechoslovakia. So there is also there is actually a movie about it, Pilishki, I think it is. It is called. And then you, and you see a, a part that there is this old man sitting in front of the piano, and he hears all the Warsaw airplanes, the warplanes flying over, and he is playing the Credo Mufmoi on the piano. And now let me talk a little bit about the the meaning of the lyrics. So Kde Domov Mui, uh, the first sentence means, where is my home? And then the rest of the song is a little bit of a description about how beautiful the country is, the pine woods, the meadows, it is paradise on earth. And then the last sentence is about my Czech land that I call my home, or my Czech land, my home. Um, to me, this song is emotional because somehow, I am a very sensitive person and I always think back of the feeling of the people that left their country, that had to leave their country uh, in, in, in 1968 because there was, you know, they wanted a better future for their family, for their kids. So they left for the United States or for Canada and they always, you know, remember this song and all the lyrics that apply to them. And I feel somehow their emotion, their connection to the song. So I really know that this is a sad song. It is an emotional song. And every time I hear it, it touches me somehow. It is beautiful. The whole feeling to it is beautiful. So you will be seeing it on the television for all the Dutch people. Uh, pay attention to it because it's a beautiful song. I hope with this background information, um, yeah, it gives you a bit of a better insight of, um, you know, why this song is the Czech national anthem and why you should be silent for a minute and listen to the melody because it's truly touching. It is really beautiful. And uh, yeah, that the best may win. Of course, to be honest, I have to say that I will support the Netherlands. Um, but still, uh, if the Czech win, I will not be sad. Um, I will be supporting them for the rest of the competition. Uh, and uh, But for Sunday, I hope that the Netherlands will win. I hope the Czechs don't mind. <laughs> um, I think that's the way it is. You know, like I was born in the Netherlands and although the Czech Republic is my second home, so let's say the Netherlands are my favorite, but then the Czechs come second. So good luck to both of the teams. Uh, may the best one win. And I'll be back soon with another Czech video. Um, so if you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And then I hope to see you soon. Uh, again on this channel. Bye-bye. Ciao.